Donna, bana, 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 bum. Hey guys, it's Dr. Dork, and I decided that we are going to do a, uh, another tech news video, probably more coming. If there are, if there's another one after this, click on Einstein's face, and you'll get to go to see the next one. I'll start off today by talking about something that Microsoft has been talking about for quite a while, called Windows RT. Basically, Windows RT is like a cross of a tablet and a laptop. So basically, it's a tablet, but it has a removable keyboard. It's got the touchscreen and everything and it's going to be based off of the ARM processor. Now for those of you who don't know, the ARM processor it, are basically ARM is a company that's been around for, I believe, about as long as Intel even, that produces proce basically processors more aimed at uh, more aimed at integrated level. So for example, AMD's R and G series CPUs are designed to compete with ARM processors. Now, continuing in our, on ARM, I guess, ARM CPUs have base, basically powered many tablets. Right now, AMD's C50 and C60, along with NVIDIA's Tegra 2 and Tegra 3, and pretty much just the entire ARM company in general, have been competing against each other in the tablet market. So far, NVIDIA is winning with their Tegra 3. Um, basically, Microsoft is saying they're going to release a version of Windows called Windows RT. It's going to be basically Windows 8 that supports ARM processors on a very high level. This is essentially like uh, Ubuntu 12.04 for ARM CPUs, except it's Windows, obviously. Basically, it's going to run better on ARM CPUs, like I said, and it's going to be a tablet laptop thingy. So really, they're not telling us too much about how it's going to run like performance-wise or what the price range is going to be. All we know is that Asus, along with many other big tablet companies like Samsung, are going to be making uh, Windows RT tablets. So. I guess cool. I, I really don't know what the use for this would be. I mean, it's basically like a laptop, except it's running off of a different company's processor. So, yeah, moving on. NVIDIA has been, like AMD, holding their, holding their video cards until quarter three of 2012. Now, AMD has been holding on to their 7990, which is basically their highest end flagship double GPU everythingness card. Whereas NVIDIA has been holding on to their mid-range cards, including the GTX 650, 650 Ti, and the 660 Ti. Now, the 650 and the 660 Ti are scheduled to be coming out. Let's see, what does... I'm getting this off of uh, TomTardware.com. By the way, uh, let's see, it says August 16th. So, very, very soon. What day is it? August 14th. So, if Tom's hardware is correct and NVIDIA is just not lying to us again, it's the 660 Ti and the GTX 650, both from NVIDIA, their mid-range cards, will be coming out in two days. Or, well, probably one day once I release this video. So, I mean, that's really cool. I mean, these cards are probably going to be coming in at the $150 to $200 range, which is what, honestly, I think uh, AMD has been very lacking. So, honestly, I'm an AMD guy. Red shirt, oh yeah. But, uh... Honestly, I would, depending on how well these cards perform, I might actually get one just because Kepler, had, the uh, Kepler architecture, uh, NVIDIA's latest architecture, has been doing incredibly well both in power consumption and gaming performance. So I might actually look at it depending on, uh, depending on the uh, power usage of these. The, right now, since the 660 Ti will be drawing 20 watts less power, that's 150 watts, and it will have basically the same number of CUDA cores, same base frequency, same, boot, same turbo frequency. Uh, as the GTX 670, which is their very, which is a very high-end card, the only difference, largely, will be the memory bus. It's 192, 192-bit memory bus compared to 256 on the GTX 670. Now, I mean, really, overall, that that's great. I really want to see this card because I think it's going to perform very well, and a lot of people agree. So, click Einstein's head if. Nothing's going to happen if you click on Einstein's head. There's just going to be an annotation there that says hello. So, yeah, cool NVIDIA. Uh, I want to see those out soon, hopefully. All right, and uh, most of you guys probably know about NASA landing the, uh, landing, what's it called? The Curiosity rover on Mars uh, recently in the last couple weeks. Huge success. I have to give a shout out. I mean, you guys may stop sending people to moon and stuff on those shuttles, but wow, you're doing a great job with the probes. Um, but it is finally, Curiosity is finally sent back the first pictures of Mars, and I'm looking at it, and really, to me, it resembles most of Arizona. 
So, it's really cool looking. I mean, it's just very surreal. I mean, think about that. That This picture, I'm, I'm turning the camera for this because it's just that cool. Here. That is a picture taken on another planet. Just think about that for a second. I'm not in that picture right now. Um, just think about that for a second. I mean, that, that is something being for millions and millions and millions of miles away just for us to see it. We made that picture incredibly far away. I mean, it's just a really cool thing to think about. I mean, it's just cool. But there's some conspiracy theories now, because after all, it does look a lot like Arizona, um, that, that there's some conspiracy theory about, like, it having just landed on some on some desert and now they're just lying to all of us. Really, we had the same thing with the moon and yet we know that it obviously happened. I mean, we're America, but not that that really means much at this point. Um, but it's really cool. August 6th, after eight month flight, blah, 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 360 degree high resolution panorama of its surroundings. August 6th, it sent Curiosity sent back pictures of Mars, millions of miles away. It's just, that's so cool. We just took a picture of something we will never, probably will not release for a very long time. We will not be able to see with our own eyes. It's just really cool. We did that. And really, it's just one of those things that just makes you think, wow, we really are an awesome, we're, we're pretty awesome. Yeah. Let's see. Um, I'm scrolling down. I have a TV now for my computer instead of it having it in the background. Um, as, as the accompanying NASA news release noted, images show a landscape close, closely resembling southwestern United States. Um, let's see. I'm looking at the screen right now if you want to see it. Yeah. Bethel. But anyway, that's really all for uh, NASA right now. Cool job, guys. I really like that. I really hope to see more from you. I decided to just do some news about my channel and me and stuff. Um, obviously, I'm once again recording with my new camera, the Canon HG10. I got, um, actually, I got this one for free. I just found it laying around in my house, so whatever. Poster came from St. Louis Science Museum. You can see my video of that by clicking on Einstein's face. Meh. <laughs> I'm bad at this. Just click on Einstein's face to uh, see my to see my video of the epic St. Louis trip. Um, otherwise, there's really not much in the way of uh, tech news. I'm thinking, guys, uh, I might be getting a new computer case. I said this in the previous video, and I got one response. I looked at the case. I kind of liked it. It was really inexpensive. But I want to see some more stuff. I want to see some other cases f from you guys under $100. I can even see $100, $510. I'd be okay with that. But under $110, good quality cases, mid-tower, I'm okay with LED fans, but I don't really care. It doesn't have to have them. Mid-tower, good features, cable management. I want to see that in this case. If you can, and if I want your guys' help, if you have a case like that and it was under 110 bucks, please tell me about it in the comments. I'd really like to hear about it. So that's about it, guys. I'll see you later.